The auxiliary sub-petrol approach is almost exclusively used for either a sub-petrol long header biceps tenodesis or resuspension of a ruptured long header biceps. Controversy continues with regards to the merits of a tenotomy of a tenodesis. This systematic review looked at 16 studies. Both the tenotomy and tenodesis had a similar success rate of 75%, but both of them suffered from issues with regards to pain. Pain following a tenotomy is thought to be due to cramping at the stump. However, more recently, a theory with regards to musculocutaneous nerve traction has been put forward. The musculocutaneous nerve inserts into the conjoint tendon, which is partly formed from the short head of biceps. When a long head of biceps tenotomy is undertaken, the tendon itself retracts distally and is thought to put some traction on the short head. This may in turn put traction on the musculocutaneous nerve, causing pain and discomfort. Pain following a tenodesis generally occurs at the tenodesis site and is thought to be due to pain coming from the residual tendon. The traditional fixation points for a biceps tenodesis are either suprapectoral, at the top of the groove, or at the bottom of the groove, or subpetral. A recent study has described the hidden lesion. In this study, they divided the long head of biceps into an intraarticular zone, so zone A, zone B, which was in the bicipital groove, and zone C, which was beneath pec major. They had 36 patients which thought they thought had an intraarticular tear. They undertook a subpetral tenodesis, so resected the whole tendon, and then sent that off to the lab. When they looked at the results, they found that there was tear invasion in 100% of the specimens in the zone B, and in 78% of the specimens in zone C. Concluding from this, the subpetral position is the optimal tenodesis position, as this always addresses the pathology, so there's no residual degenerate tendon left behind. To undertake a subpetral biceps tenodesis, access to the tendon as it merges from the undersurface of pec major is required. When we remove the deltoid muscle and then pec major muscle, we can see the point of access. By abducting and externally rotating the shoulder, the inferior edge of pec major essentially slides up the humerus, revealing the bicipital groove. If you place your thumb in this position and press down, you can feel the humeral shaft directly underneath this and can often palpate the long head of biceps. You can do this on your own arm. A three to four centimeter skin incision over this area is all that's required to access the bicipital groove. To undertake a subpetral biceps tenodesis, initially tenotomy is required. This is performed arthroscopically. We can see the degenerate tendon and with the punch, a tenotomy is performed we can see the tendon shoots out of the joint. Having performed the tenotomy, the wounds are closed and the inferior edge of the deltoid and the position for the incision are marked out. The arm is then abducted and externally rotated. I prefer to use an arm holder, but a consistent can do this. And then the incision is made. Having made the incision and gone through the subcutaneous tissues, the deltoid is retracted laterally, pec major is retracted superiorly an attractor is used to immediately retract the tissues, taking care not to put too much traction, avoiding a musculocutaneous nerve palsy. The long head of biceps is then identified. It's been exteriorized here. Having undertaken this, we can see the bicipital groove at the bottom of the incision. The stump of the long head of biceps tendon is then prepared with a whip stitch and secured either using an inter interference screw or I prefer a unicortical button. The wound is then closed in layers. If you'd like to see more talks and videos on orthopaedic exposures, visit our YouTube channel or to find out more about the teaching and other courses that we run, our website cambridgeorthopaedics.co.uk.